Hello everyone, welcome to CNA, the daily newspaper analysis. So today we are back with the following list of topics to discuss. So let's start. The first topic says about Indians moving out. So why this is a news? So recently we can see that various number of people, there's been a data came out that in 2011, 2015, 19, 22, you can see the highest number of people has moved out from India in 2022, that is the highest in the past decade. So how many people directly went out? It is around 2.25 lakhs people renounced Indian citizenship in 2022, the highest in past decade. So we have seen that in the recent times also, uh, according to even the International Organization for Migration, the Global Migration Report 2020 says about that many number of migrants today is basically of Indian origin. Okay, so there are various number of significance of this Indian diaspora, be it in the terms of economical front, be it in the terms of political front. Okay, also uh, today we can see that in every services today, the Indians are directly having some of these respective categories of work. And therefore, the high net worth individuals are making a beeline for such programs in US, Portugal, Australia, Malta, Greece in search of better opportunities, healthcare, quality of life and education. So therefore, because of all such number of things associated, because of in India, we have seen that we are totally today in the verge of development and it's not a developed state as of now. Okay. So therefore, this data has come up about why these peoples have directly uh, went on to these countries. Basically, for all such number of better opportunities, which are not available in India. Okay. And also, we can see that according to this Henley Global Citizens Report, there were around 3.47 lakhs uh, in India December 2021 out of this 1.49 uh, HNIs uh, were found in just nine cities. Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Pune, Chennai, Guru Gram, Ahmedabad. Okay. So, these people who are slowly and slowly moving up. Okay. So, they are today... Uh, this high net worth individuals, okay, who are moving out from these locations, okay. So, these people directly find such of the important locations in some other countries and therefore, they are today moving out and acquiring the visas as well as citizenship of other nations, okay. So, this was recently published by the Ministry of External Affairs and therefore, it was in news, okay. Next, sealed cover jurisprudence. So, what is the sealed cover jurisprudence? So, it's a legal concept that refers to the practice of presenting sensitive or confidential information to a court or tribunal in a sealed envelope or cover that is to be opened and reviewed only by the judge or judges in the charge of the case. So, even though there is no specific law to define the idea of sealed cover, the SC derives its power from the use from the Rule 7 of the Order 13 of the Supreme Court's Rules 2013 and Section 123 of the Indian Evidence Act of 1872. So, the court can ask the information uh, in a sealed cover in broadly two circumstances. Number one, when information is connected to an ongoing investigation and second, when it involves personal or confidential information whose disclosure may result in violation of individual's privacy or breach of trust. Okay. But today, because of lack of transparency, because of disparate access, because of limited opportunity to respond and also the risks of abuse with arbitrary nature, interference with fair trial, we can see that such number of sealed covered jurisdictions prudence is not under the principles of justice administration and therefore it is directly on the contest in various number of cases be it the p gopala christian versus the state of kerala okay where the supreme court held that the disclosure of documents to the accused is constitutionally mandated even though the investigation is ongoing and documents may lead to breakthrough in the investigation also you can refer to the inx media case of 2019 where the supreme court has criticized the delhi high court for basing its decision to deny bail to former union minister of documents uh, submitted by the enforcement directorate in a sealed cover okay so in every affairs today we could see that the use of sealed cover jurisprudence must be carefully balanced with the principles of due process fair trial and open justice and are justified and proportional to the specific circumstances of the case so courts and tribunals should also ensure that the parties who are not privy to the information in the sealed cover are given a fair opportunity to present the case and challenge and evidence of arguments presented in it so therefore today we can see that because of the recent discussions of the chief justice of india dy chandra chud okay who formally refused the suggestions offered by the government in sealed cover on the formation of the proposed committee to inquire into the handbook report of the dani group so in this context today we could see that the sealed cover jurisprudence was basically in news okay Next, another Bikran size carrier. So we know about the recent launch of the INS Bikran. So today we know that with the launch of the INS Bikran, India will have two operational aircraft carriers. One is Bikran, another one is the Bikram Aditya. Okay, so therefore, today we can compare this with such number of aircraft carriers of USAB, the Gerald, Port Class, with China, Fujian. Okay, then we can see about the United Kingdom. Okay, Queen Elizabeth Class, Russia, Admiral, Kuznetsov, France, Charles de Gaulle, Italy, Kever. Okay, so today, because of all such number of factors, today we can see that 
even the Indian Navy today is planning of a third aircraft carrier which has not been named so. Okay. So therefore, recently this was published by the Navy chief and therefore it was in news. Okay. Next, India to export solar power. So we know that India is planning to export uh, solar power to some of the nearby countries, okay, which was recently been published by Bhupinder Bhalla, Secretary Minister for the New and Renewable Energy. Okay, so we all know that uh, India would target installing 500 kilo gigawatt of electricity capacity from non-fossil fuel sources by 2030. Okay, so because of this, India was to install 175 gigawatt of renewable energy from solar, wind, biomass, and hydropower sources by December 2022, but had only installed around 122 gigawatt around December 2022. So of this solar power is around 100 gigawatt, though only 62 gigawatt has been installed. So therefore, today we can see that India is directly on the process of challenging its Chinese counterpart, which is basically going with a large production of the solar power. Okay, so. Slowly and slowly, we can see that we are directly reaching its level and therefore it will significantly target the 500 watt by around 2030. Okay, so therefore today we have to remove all these bottlenecks which is directly coming up in the place of solar power. So therefore, this was in news. Coming to the next one, decline in rainfall can affect Brahmaputra Basin. So because of the climate change today, we can see that uh, this uh, Brahmaputra Basin, this is the whole Brahmaputra Basin is directly coming in some of the challenges today we can see with respect to the sharp decline in rainfall. So we can see that around 800 million people are contingent on water from the Brahmaputra Basin. And hydrology of Brahmaputra Basin is one of the most vulnerable in the world, which is subjected to combined effect of snow melting and extreme monsoon rainfall. So climate change has the potential to intensify the hydrological cycle, leading to more intense precipitation with associated changes in the temporal and spatial distribution of water ability in the Brahmaputra Basin. To what extent climate change will impact on the river flow of Brahmaputra Basin is not yet clear. So many researchers have been uh, like have been done. Okay. Uh, however, the assessment of climate change impacts on the brain scale hydrology by using well calibrated hydrological modeling has seldom been conducted by the Brahmaputra Basin due to lack of observed data for calibration and validation. Okay. So therefore, today, if you have to see about this respective river, so if I need to protect this river, we have to project some of the peace flow, which may lead to even devastating floods in the respective future. So therefore, today, uh, if I have to directly go with the process of, uh, of conserving this Brahmaputra Basin, then obviously, uh, this uh, decline in rainfall with respect to, to climate change is a major impact that can be seen, which is maybe affecting the peoples around 800 million people who are dependent on this river for the respective resources. Okay, so this was in news. Lastly, the MP model in agriculture. So what is this? So recently, we have seen that India uh, today is a dollar three point five trillion economy. And as per the IMF focus, if the current growth trend continues, the current uh, the country will likely to go for around dollar five point four trillion by twenty twenty seven. So no wonder Prime Minister Narendra Modi has termed the next twenty five years when India completes hundred years of independence as Amrit Kal. There are lessons from Madhya Pradesh agricultural model for inclusive sustainable growth. Okay, so this, if I see about Maharashtra, okay, of all the major states, we know that Gujarat has topped in overall GDP with a growth rate of around 8.9%, followed by Uttarakhand at 8.7%, followed by Telangana with 8.6%. But in recent times, Madhya Pradesh is the only state whose agricultural contribution to the overall GDP has increased to 40% as against 18.8% at the all India level at its model survey should aptly describe as inclusive and sustainable. So therefore, the Madhya Pradesh being the highest performer has checked the highest growth rate in agriculture at 7.3%. Okay. And therefore, the state's agri GDP growth is the way above and uh, along all India agriculture GDP growth. So today, Madhya Pradesh has made its mark as a top notch player in tomato, garlic, mandarin, oranges, pulses, especially in gram and soybean cultivation. So it is following a well diversified portfolio in agriculture while doubling irrigation coverage from 24% to around 45.3% of its crop, crop area over the last two decades. So therefore, Madhya Pradesh agricultural model suggests that a well-diversified portfolio in crops is behind the highest growth in the farm sector. And therefore, this is inclusive and sustainable and offers a path for other Indian states too. Okay, so as to make India growth in the sustainable atmosphere. So therefore, this MP model in agriculture is very much relevant today in our context where all Indian states should follow this particular model so as to get a rapid growth and development with respect to agriculture. Okay, so this was in the context of this editorial. So please answer this respective five MCQs and please do join our WhatsApp and Telegram channel for further updates. So that's all for today. Thank you and Jai Hind.